Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about the spiritual practices of meditation and confession. The word meditation, how does that word specifically make you feel? Maybe you're comfortable with it and meditation is a helpful practice in your everyday life. Or maybe that word reminds you of something that is evil or anti-Christian. However you feel about that word, I want to challenge you to lay down those feelings for a moment and come with me as we talk together about Christian meditation. My favorite definition of the practice of Christian meditation is a long, slow look at God. Long and slow. That's kind of the opposite of the speed of our culture, isn't it? We want same day shipping and we want to be able to skip the line and we need our phones to be faster and slimmer and we, we, we love the instant gratification that comes from the internet. But long and slow, that is a challenge. Now, Christian meditation is not about, you know, moving off to an island and sitting on the beach with your legs crossed and exploring the, the emptiness of your mind and trying to find your true self. That's, that's not what it, it's about. Christian meditation is about filling ourselves with what is true about God. Filling our words, our heart, and our mind with what is true about God. Christ-centered meditation is a spirit-enabled and Christ-centered focus on the love and power and holiness of God. This is very different than other forms of meditation that we would find in a religion like Buddhism or Hinduism. In typical Eastern meditation, the purpose is to empty your mind in order to explore your inner self or, or your true self so that you can achieve a kind of perfection or a state of, of personal salvation. Now, what I want you to notice is that if we are taking a long, slow look at God, the focus is not on ourselves, but on God. So we could talk lots about the different forms of meditation and, and we don't have time to get into all of that. But what I want you to notice is that Christian meditation is different from many different forms because the focus is not about emptying your mind, it's about filling your mind. It's not a focus about exploring yourself, it's a focus on looking at God. And as we do that, He then transforms us and changes us through our long, slow look at Him. So if Christian meditation is not a focus on ourselves, but a focus on God, that means we're focusing on the elements of who God is, and we're looking at and thinking about the things that God is actually offering to us. As we think about His holiness, we consider His grace, we consider His love, and we let those thoughts meditate and recycle through our hearts and through our mind. And this is where scripture is a really important element of the practice of Christian meditation because the words in our Bibles become the fuel for our long, slow look at who God is. Often, I like to meditate while I run. I mean, look, it's beautiful out here today. As I focus on God's creation, sometimes I, I ponder the elements of God's character, like his holiness and how amazing it is that he would invite me, a, a person, into his holy presence through Jesus. Or sometimes I recite scripture, something that I memorize that's short and, and easy for me to repeat over and over. And as I run and as I'm taking a long, slow look at God, I allow his truth to just cycle over in my mind, in my heart, and through my words. And as I do that, you know, nothing magical necessarily happens, but what's happening is I take a long, slow look at God. I find myself connecting to him 
and recognizing his presence all around me and his presence through his spirit within me. Christian meditation doesn't require any you know, physical poses or any chants or, or phrases that unlock some kind of state of being for us. Christian meditation starts with a relationship with Jesus that allows us to communicate and receive from God the Father. It then requires a heart that is postured in humility to say, God, I set aside everything else and my focus is on you. Please fill me. Please speak to me and please reveal your truth to me. If you're wondering where do I start with meditation, I want to encourage you to start with the words of scripture. The book of Psalms is a great place to start. It's a collection of, of prayers and stories and language that encapsulate who God is. Those words in the book of Psalms will become fuel for your spirit-enabled, Christ-centered focus on God the Father. Now here's a word that makes us feel uncomfortable, confession. When I was in grade one, I stole a Hot Wheels car from my teacher's prize box at school. And when I got the car home, I felt so guilty that I didn't even want to play with it. When I finally confessed to my mom, you know, what I did, um, she said, well, we should really talk to your teacher about it tomorrow. And I'll never forget sitting across from Mrs. Stemler in grade one and the relief that I felt confessing what I did and then, you know, zooming this car back across the table. Confession makes us really uncomfortable, but it's only through confession that we actually receive forgiveness. The practice of confession is when we open up the bad in our lives towards God and we invite him into our brokenness and sin and, and sinful decisions. And as we do that, God then brings us into the healing process where in Christ we are forgiven from our sin, but we can also experience the reality of that forgiveness. Before I confessed my sin of stealing this car to my teacher, when I confessed it to God, I, I, had, I had received the forgiveness of the consequences of stealing this car. But through my confession to my teacher, then the healing process began in the physical consequences of my sin and my teacher could trust me again. I recognize that you may be dealing with something that is you know, much bigger than a, a Hot Wheels car, but whatever the thing is that you are walking through that you may need to confess, the forgiveness and love of Jesus is powerful enough and strong enough to forgive you from that thing. And so my encouragement to you is to open up that portion of your life to God and allow his healing and forgiveness to work through the power of confession. Psalm 32 describes for us David's thoughts and some of his feelings around the practice of confession. In verse one and two, David says, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. As David is saying, you know, the one who is forgiven is blessed, or the one whose sin is covered is blessed. What he's saying is that that, that person has already confessed their sin. God can't forgive something that we don't open ourselves up to him for. We can't receive forgiveness unless we confess. Then he continues in, in verse three. He says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up like in the heat of summer. I like the image of these last couple of verses because you, you could read it in saying, you know, God is, is, is punishing David as he's pressing his hand on him. But what I see is God prodding and pushing David back into relationship with him so that David then realizes that he needs to come to this place where he can confess his sin and open his brokenness towards God and allow him to forgive. Forgiveness happens on the other side of confession.
So we've talked about meditation and how it is a long, slow look at God. A spirit-enabled, Christ-centered focus on the glory, power, and love of God. Then we spoke about confession and how confession is when we open up the bad in our lives to God. And we invite him in to bring the reality of the forgiveness and grace and mercy of Jesus into our sin and brokenness. And so what I want to talk about now is how do these two ideas actually work together as spiritual practices? So I'm going to draw something here and it's going to help illustrate. So let's say I'm, I'm the example here. So let's just draw me. Here I am. And okay. That looks like me, I think. So I'm meditating. I'm taking a long, slow look at God. Here's my thought bubble. And I'm thinking about God's love, his justice, his grace, and his power. And I'm feeling great. I'm connecting with God and I'm, I'm receiving his love. But as I look at the glory and power and majesty of God's perfection, and then I think about who I am and my not so great moments and my sin, then it starts to cause me to reflect on my own brokenness in light of God's perfection. So this then leads me to consider my own sin and brokenness. As I'm considering my sin and my flaws, I then need to confess. And as I do that, I then open myself up to the love and grace and forgiveness that we receive from the Father. Then, as I confess my sin, I can then receive forgiveness because through the cross we receive the grace and forgiveness of Jesus and then this begins to work as a cycle because when I receive the grace and forgiveness of Jesus it then causes me to think about his love and his power and I begin to recycle the thoughts of God's grace in my heart and in my mind. And as I do that and I behold God's perfection, I then come to realize the areas that I have not yet been made perfect, which then leads me back to confession, which then leads me back to experiencing the grace and forgiveness of God. And so we see here through this practice of meditation and confession, it almost becomes a rhythm that begins to shape us into the image of Jesus. And so my hope and my challenge for you is that you would take this practice of meditation and confession and begin to practice it, not for the sake of just doing it, but for the sake of connecting to the heart of God and being shaped into the image of Jesus through the rhythms of